Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today I've got a, a special little video for you guys today on uh, rusting. Now I've done some other rusting uh, techniques in the past, but this is something that I kind of discovered quite by accident using Tamiya's new panel liner. They're enamel panel liners that have just become available in the United States. Uh, we'll still be using our Vallejo pigments. Uh, they're great and they come in multiple different types of colors. So we're going to use this along with the, uh, the panel liners and it really does create a, an awesome effect I think on it. And you can get all different types of tones. So what I thought I would do is I would just take some uh, stock styrene, just some tubing that kind of looks like a muffler. We'll cut it up into little sections. We'll use our basic paint job underneath it like we always do. And then we're going to go ahead and rust it up with a bunch of different colors and kind of show you how they look. So we'll probably do maybe four to you know to six different type of things, but to really show you what the rust looks like. So uh, with all that in mind, let's get started on it. guys, before we get started on the how-to video, I thought I would take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers and viewers. Uh, the last year and a half has been incredible for me on YouTube. Uh, what started out as a little local how-to channel for some of my local customers that come in and ask questions has turned into what it is today. Uh, we are quickly approaching uh, 37,000 subscribers and four and a half million views, which is beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought this would actually ever turn into this. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of the people that have come in from around the country and around the world for that matter to visit the little store and stop in and uh, take a look around and see where all this happens. So it's been great meeting you all and I hope to meet many more of you in the future. In fact, uh, next year in Phoenix, the IPMS Nationals will be going on and I'm only about, about 25 minutes away from where the actual event is going to be held. So I hope to see you all a lot next year too. Uh, it's just been a, a great, great time for the last year and a half on YouTube. So I want to thank you all for that. And I won't, won't bore you anything more with, with any more comments, but we'll get to the video. But uh, thank you again. Okay, since this is a uh, standalone video uh, on rusting, I want to tell, tell you about the, uh, the base coat that I use. Now, I mix it up in advance, so I always have it on hand. But I'll use this as like the mist coat over the tracks, as well as any scratching, anything. I just think it's a great color. It has a little bit of looks like oxidation in it, but not terribly rusty. So it's a great base coat. And the way I make that is I use 70% of XF68 NATO Brown. 25 to 30 percent of NATO black and the reason I say 25 to 30 percent sometimes I'll put a little bit of flat red in it to give it a little bit more uh, red pop to it just depending on what it is but this batch that we're going to be using right now is 75 25 5 on those colors and we mix it all up we add our same amount of thinner as we always do with Tamiya paints and this whole bottle is ready to airbrush so that is what we're going to airbrush with our uh, plastic right now now as we put a coat of this on, you'll see the color that I was talking about. And then after we let this dry for a little while, probably like five or 10 minutes, we're gonna spray the entire piece with some kind of lacquer clear coat. Now the lacquer clear coat is gonna seal in our paint job underneath and allow us to do all of the other effects on top of it without pulling off the paint. Okay, so what I've done now is I've cut up those pieces of plastic and just glued them to this board with some super glue real fast, just so we have a, I don't have to actually hold it while I'm doing it. And now I've got a, a little variety of different Vallejo pigments, including some different rust and a light sienna. And this one is a great one to kind of give it a dusty, dirty effect on top of the rust. You'll, you need your Tamiya panel liner. You mainly need the brown one for doing it, but I'll show you a little effect that you can get with the black at the very end too. And you'll need a flat brush. I'm happy to be using one of the Tamiya modeling um, brushes with the big flat end right here. And then a little odorless thinner is always good to have too for cleanup because these two are enamel. So the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna shake up that very well, which I've already done. And just using the brush that comes with it, I'm going to just put a coat over the uh, the whole thing. Now it doesn't show up very well at this point because it's, it's a similar color to our base coat. But I'll show you. The first one I'll, I'll start off with will be like this new rust. This is kind of a, a lighter pigment on it. And you want to just start going on and start patting it into place. and don't be afraid to put too much on it because 
extra actually makes it look good. It kind of gives it that, that flaky effect that rust gets when it's been sitting for a while and has parts coming off of it. So, and I'm, I'm gonna mainly just show you this first one, how it affects, and just don't feel, be afraid to start working it into the, uh, the panel liner. Okay, now we're going to let this set up for about five minutes and we're going to come back and show you what it looks like once it dries. Now after the, uh, the product has dried, you can take a wide flat brush and knock off any of the excess on there and you'll see the, uh, the tone you start to get. Now that's just one color. What I've done on this next one is I've mixed up a couple of different colors of rust. I used just regular rust and old rust mixed together to kind of come up with this effect right here and you can see when you have the multiple colors how it really gives some depth to it now we'll also I'm gonna go ahead and rust up these other three over here using a variation of different colors and I'll let those dry come back and show you what all the different poles look like and to get a very good modeled effect, put your uh, panel liner on there. And then starting off with burnt sienna, I'm gonna kind of put that one on over the entire piece. And that's a really rich, dark rust color. And before any of this dries, take some of your other colors like new rust and just tap it into certain areas so you don't want to completely blend it you want to have a multi-tone effect and then you can even use a little bit of the regular rust tapped around start to blend a little bit of it now while it's starting to dry and so we'll let that dry a little bit and come back and show you what it looks like and now also we've let all of our poles dry and as you can see the rust effect really and these are all different variations of tone so you can play with them any way you want you know make it really dark rust really light rust whatever uh, whatever you like in it is really capable of doing with just a couple of pigments and the uh, the brown panel liner also thought I would show you on a flat piece of plastic as well too that if you're gonna do like a panel that you wanted to rust up so we'll kind of do this area kind of large so you can see it very well once again just putting down a coat of the panel liner and then just taking our powder I'm gonna start off with the burnt sienna and just start pounding that into place and before you get uh, worried about when something looks like things totally dry completely different than the way they look right now now we're gonna take some of our new rust and just in areas kind of pat it down And of course the process is a lot of blending. And then finally a little regular rust sprinkle on top. Kind of pound it into the surface here. And we'll let that dry for a little while, but what I wanted to show you this one this is one that I just did about five minutes earlier with those same three colors and you can see as it dries it starts to begin to really really look like dry flat rust I really like the way that stuff comes out now with the uh, the black I was telling you earlier if you want to put a few little stains into your your rusted surface just using the the black panel liner 
just kind of put a couple of little dots into it. And you can go over it and kind of blend it in with your, your brush. And like I said, now it looks different right now, but wait till that dries. We'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like once it dries. So here is a close up after the, uh, the black has dried. And you can see just like the staining that it does underneath. It, it's, it's real subtle, so you can adjust it any way you want. You can also use a little bit more brown on it as well. The black looks really good that if you're doing anything that's rusting that's got like rivets on it, you put a little touch around the rivets and it really makes them pop out. But as you can see right here, the rust effect is uh, pretty, pretty nice looking and it's super simple to do. So I broke the, uh, the pipes off of the uh, stand that we created for it to kind of show you a side-by-side -side comparison with the flat panel and the different variations of uh, rust effect that you can get on it. Uh, the only thing holding you back on this whole technique is your imagination because no matter what you do, you really can't go wrong with it. If you don't like what you did, put a little bit more of the brown, brown panel liner on it and put another coat on and just let it build up and you'll just be amazed at the different variations in color you can get. And like I was telling you earlier, or two if you want to put a little bit of the light sienna on the light sienna will kind of tone it down and give it kind of a, a rusty effect but with like a dust coat on top of it so i want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming